Hello and welcome to How's Your Represence. We are so glad that you are with us today, no matter where you are or what time of year it is as you're listening to this. I'm going to tell you right now, it's cold right now. And I am wearing my big furry, no, actually not furry. I've got my cashmere blazer on. I feel very important and very warm. Uh, it's awfully great when the weather changes and you can shake up your wardrobe. That is one of the best things about having different parts of the different weather changes. It's one of the best things. You have landed on How's Your E-Presence. We are a show that's produced by E-Presence. I am Mark Galvin, your host. Our producer extraordinaire is Morgan Wood. Thanks for being, being here. What do we do on this channel? We like to help you learn something new about marketing, learn something new about how to reach a new audience. And today is not going to be any different. We're always building great content for our library. You, you guys know this. We've had some recent great shows. One of them that we just did, I think this was last week. It was a uh, yeah, it was last week, was how to optimize LinkedIn at every level with Daniel Alphon. He joined us from Israel. This is the greatest thing about the internet today is you're able to reach people from all over the world. Daniel shared some really great information about LinkedIn. We've also talked to Gordon Van Weckel of Alchemy Consulting on how to market local businesses. And we spoke to the famous Broncar Lee, who has over a million views of videos as he was beatboxing with his son. But he talked about how to how music can make you more successful business person. Our shows are always live, and we run them on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Hopefully, you can join us. We are on Twitter. Let me look at this list. We're on Facebook, LinkedIn, um, uh, YouTube, and Twitter. We are. We would love for you to, to join us. If you have a question or two, be sure to send those questions right there on the screen. But more importantly, please subscribe. Wherever you're catching us, hit that subscribe button on your screen because we want you to know when we go live. That way you can send us a question. You can participate in our discussion. We always enjoy that. What are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about how you grow a larger blog audience, how to grow an email list. We're also going to talk about how you communicate differently to different audiences. Not everybody, let me rephrase this, your different client bases that you have probably need to have different, way, different uh, language that you'll want to use. We're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about how you can mess up your email marketing, right? So in case you're dying to know how to mess it up, you'll have to join us and listen to the rest of the show and we'll get into that. So just a reminder, we'd love for you to subscribe and this is this way you can personally interact with our guests. Speaking of our guest, who is it? Our guest today is Liz Wilcox. Liz is an email marketer on a freaking mission to help more business people package up their magic and sell it through email. So in, in layman's terms, she is someone that gets email marketing and likes to talk about it and is a fun, fun communicator. So you're going to enjoy uh, this, this show today. Reminder, if you're joining us on any platform, anywhere, send a question. Pop it right there in your chat box. If you don't have a question, that's cool. Let us know where you're watching from. If you're joining us from, um, from San Diego, California, Plug, type it, hey, joining you from San Diego. We'd love to see where all the wonderful people out there watching, where you're joining us from. All right. I think that that's all I have for the pre-show stuff. Let's see if we can find Liz off stage if she's out there. Let's see. Where is she? Hey, Liz, welcome. Thank you. You, you, can't, you can't miss me. I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having <laughs> me, Mark. I'm really excited. <laughs> I am so glad you're here. All right. So for those of you on podcast, you're going to want to go check this out. Liz, does, you know, she's got some interesting things going on here. Number one, what is up with NSYNC? You've got those all those posters behind you. Have you met them? Have you been on the show? Have you been a performer? I, what is that? What's up with that? I also wish I had met NSYNC. Um, yeah. So if you're catching the podcast and you can't see me i've got in sync in the background i'm wearing a will smith shirt it's part of my branding i know this isn't a branding episode but if you can 
inject pop culture into your brand somehow. It's like you're driving down the road. The next time you hear Justin Timberlake, you're going to think of Liz Wilcox. You're going to oh, think wow. of, hey, I need to send an email to my list. And boom, I've gotten you to take action without, you know, doing anything. Um, well, so I like that. it's just, yeah, it's just, you know, side note, it's just a branding thing. But of course, obviously, I love NSYNC. I love the 90s. If you go to my website, uh, you know, it looks like Saved by the Bell exploded onto the page. Uh, it's really, really fun. That is really cool. So this is interesting. You're kind of riding on the coattails of NSYNC and Will Smith <laughs> by using them as a reminder. I like that, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't think NSYNC has a problem. You're giving them cred. They're, you know, they are in sync. They're there, but you love NSYNC so much that that's really cool. What is the poster up top? Is that also in sync? It is another in sync um, of, it's another in sync poster. I'd move my camera, but my camera's propped up on the top and it's not, it's not You're tied good. up like normal. This but is yeah, good. it's another in sync uh, so, poster So, is it a is it safe to assume you are a child of the 90s? Yes, it would be safe to assume that. <laughs> so this Will Smith shirt, you got to stand up. Let, let people see sure, that Will sure. Smith. This is great. I Look so at this shirt. This is awesome. <laughs> I've even got Carlton on the side. Where to where to go? You know, it's so hard. There he is. I, I my arms in the way. <laughs> I think there that's awesome. You can kind of see him. I've got the Carlton on the side. I actually just went to see Will Smith for his book tour he did a five city tour um and it was like the best moment of my life going i ah, saw him in so person cool. i was like 30 feet away from him it was amazing you know um it's probably not easy to track down a will smith shirt that looks like that so where did you find such a thing I love that you asked this. This is a perfect full circle. I actually, Justin Timberlake's mother, a couple years ago, opened up a merchandise shop of all the old NSYNC stuff that she just had lying around. Justin for, Timberlake's mother. Yeah. And the if if you guys don't know NSYNC, their most popular song, I think, of all time was called Bye Bye Bye. And it was called buy, 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 as in like purchase.com. <laughs> and for some reason, I found this sweater on there. And I said, it's the only thing I bought. And I didn't even actually buy any NSYNC stuff. I, I bought the Will Smith shirt and uh, been loving it ever since. Oh, I think that's hilarious. That's great. I, there's, I would love to get into why Justin Timberlake's mom is so focused on on um not you know on in sync not justin but on in sync that must have been you know loving that 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 brand first um he's such i mean that guy he's he's done well hasn't he wow he's he's done rather well yes sir it's, another that is assumption. so cool i i love that she's probably a, uh, a child of the 90s as well i have something tells me right not a child but uh someone who loves the 90s that was probably a good time in at that household all right, mm -hmm. I'm going to get into fun stuff here. You ready? Okay. Um, we did want to talk pop culture, um, and and I'm sorry we can't keep doing that, but you were an RV blogger, a recreational vehicle blogger. Um, actually, that sounds so funny in, in that way. People who enjoyed using RVs were your audience, and you transitioned over to email marketing. Why did you do that? Sure. So a lot of people that are in email marketing, a lot of folks that, uh, you know, teach copywriting and stuff like that, I feel like they start off as service providers and then, you know, they, they get enough experience under their belt and they kind of go off on their own. I started off the complete opposite. I was on my own at first. I was this RV blogger. I loved my RV blog. And I, I kept hearing all these gurus say things like, you know, email your list, the money's in the list, the money's in the list. And I was uh -huh. a, I was a mother. I, you know, I lived in my RV. I lived in 200 square feet. I didn't, if you've ever been to the woods, you know, you know how crappy the internet can be. And yeah. so with email, email became very efficient and very effective for me, you know, and I just started emailing, emailing, emailing. And eventually my blog was just kind of an email list to me. And I ended up, um, um, a couple years ago, I said, Hey guys, I keep hearing this 
uh, that you want an RV maintenance. Uh, you need a resource on RV maintenance. I said, click here if you'd be interested in me creating a resource on that. I had 141 clicks. Wow. And about 100 days later, I did a five-day cart close, typical course open, right? And I made 141 sales. So I started sharing that story around, you know, around the block, you know, around the internet streets and all these copywriters, all these marketers. Oh my gosh, Liz, that's crazy. That's that's impossible. How did you do that? And I said, well, I just email my people, you know, just kind of innocently. Right. Um, it's always when it's when it's your thing, it always seems easy and obvious. Right. Right. And right. they were like, no, you need to be teaching this. I don't know what you did, but you need to be teaching this. So I said, okay. And I was kind of, you know, I was kind of getting out of the RV life. I traveled for four years and, you know, I said, okay, um, I don't want the RV thing to be my thing forever. So I actually sold that blog and I went all in on the emails because I just hated seeing all my other friends, you know, creating courses, watching uh, videos and listening to podcasts like this one. And then, you know, launching to crickets. I I thought, gosh, there's got to right. be a simpler way. If I can do it traveling around with spotty internet, um, selling to men in their 60s who don't know what an online course is and don't want to pay for electricity, like, they're, they're, you know, <laughs> I, I, I've, got something to share. <laughs> I've got something to share. And so I sold that blog and I went all in on the email marketing. Oh, so this is really cool. There's so much here that I think is very interesting. The first is that you did this by happenstance and you were selling something. What were you actually selling on that first email? Um, the very first uh, course that I sold was RV maintenance. So teaching people so how course. to fix their RVs. It was a course. Yeah, I had launched smaller digital products before then. I had experience, um, but I had never launched a course. And so Got I knew, it. you know, everyone and their mother, launch a course, launch a course. I said, so I'm going to give it my all, right? I'm, if you can't tell, I'm a zero or 100 type of gal, right? Like I'm either <laughs> all in or I'm all out. And right. so I just, you know, I did all the things, right? And any idea that came to me to sell it, you know, I was doing it. I did a ton of pre-launch, you know, and it just popped off. It went really well. I ended up getting so cool. 400 students in the first year. Um, and so I haven't you got, changed the bike tire. <laughs> uh, so this is great. So you you were doing the courses yourselves yourself, and did you? What were you charging for the courses? Did you start off giving a free course and then then a paid course? How did you build into that? Um. So I had at this point in the game, my email list was about two and a half or three years old, and I had sold smaller things. I had a co-run a digital summit where I got a lot of leads. I know we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Um, and as far as how I sold, I, I literally just, like I said, I just asked, Hey, would you be interested in this? I had 141 right. people click and I thought, okay, well, even if I get 14 people, that would be worth it. So I started right. working on the course. I didn't sell anything before. I just made my audience part of the experience. I said, okay, what do you want in this bad boy? You know, and anyone that emailed me back, I'd write it down. Okay, thanks. I'm definitely huh. gonna, there's definitely gonna be a video on that. And then I actually launched a live show and I'd ask people like, hey, uh, you know, I, I sent out an email once a week, of course. And I'd say, hey, if you have any crappy RV stories, that have to do with maintenance, you know, hit reply and let me know. And I convinced several people to make me videos. And these are people, they don't, they don't know how to make videos, right? I'm like, just do it on your phone. We're going to put it in it the show. So awesome. you're, you're part, my, the name of my brand was the virtual campground. So it was a very communal thing, right? And so at the end of every show, I'd say, oh, you know, here, here's Mark with his story on how his slide, whatever, whatever. Right. And they'd be telling the story. And then, you know, we cut to the end of the show and I say, well, it's a good thing I'm creating that course. It launches March 18th. Be on the lookout. It's going to be a hundred. Oh, nice. Right. And I did that for 90 days over and over every single week, Tuesdays, 8 p.m. Eastern. I, it didn't, I wouldn't, I would sit outside of 
you know, a Winn-Dixie, a Publix, a Kroger um, to get internet, to do that live show and to get people so excited. And I made a trailer, like you make a trailer for a movie. I made a trailer of little bits of the, um, little bits of the course, you know, of the different videos. And yep. I just got people, if you can't tell, like if you're watching the podcast, you can't see me, but I'm very colorful. I'm my, my glasses are rainbow. Like I love hyping people up. I love getting them excited. And it was just getting that much excitement, I think contributed to the success of the course. Okay. So I think this is, this is fantastic. And you, so you immediately started charging for that course. This wasn't something that you eased into. You immediately said, okay, we're going to, I'm going to give you something of value right out of the gate, but they already trusted you. Your audience had already <clears throat> built a relationship with you, so to speak. Correct. <laughs> I'm all about building that foundation. And that's what I teach now. If you have a strong foundation, if you've already built in that know, like, and trust, like your conversion rates can be crazy. You know, it's, Interesting. it's really about just getting to know who exactly you're talking about or talking to and all those objections, you know, people say, and, you know, answer in the sales email on the sales page, you've got to, you know, answer objections. I had done that 90 days prior. So by the time I open, you know, open the doors, people were like, okay, I, you've answered all my questions. I'm ready to buy right now. That is really awesome. All right. So you and I were going to talk about the audience and you just did that. And the, the question that I have after this is you got to grow a list and the list is everything. And you said this early on that email, you had heard again and again and again that the email list is gold. Number one, share, because listen, you and I run, I'm sure this happens to you. People say, why email? I hate email. I just delete it. So why do I want to have an email list? It's always worth uh, really reinforcing this. Why is an email list so valuable? Okay. So you don't hate email. You hate people that email you worthless stuff. Just like you don't okay, hate Okay. That's email. true. I'd agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's, um, it's just like an actual mailbox. So I go to my mailbox probably only once a week, right? Cause you know, like they say with email, mail is dead, right? It's not actually look at Amazon. <laughs> um, <Right>. and, <laughs> so anyway, um, you know, I go to my mailbox, let's say I've got a couple, you know, I've got a couple envelopes like, oh, you know, John moved three years ago. I wish they'd stop emailing me. Oh, I thought I asked, you know, I thought I already paid this bill. And you put that on the counter. Oh my gosh, Mark Galvin, he sent me something. I'm opening it right away. Like if Mark sent me something, I would, you know, I'd throw away the rest, right? Or I'd Every, forget about everybody, it. Everybody, the... everybody says that, by the way. I, I know, I know they do. <laughs> I know they do. And <laughs> so I would open that immediately, right? I would be excited because I know Mark. He's personally sending me something, right? It's the exact same behavior in your inbox, whether you use Gmail, Outlook, Apple Mail, whatever. You, when you open up that app, that's your exact behavior. Okay, no, no. Why did I sign up for that? I don't remember who that person is. Oh, I'll get to that bill right. later. Oh my gosh, Liz Wilcox, super fun. I'm opening that. I wonder what she has to say. <laughs> super today. fun, yeah. Super fun, jazz yeah. hands. <laughs> and so <laughs> that's why email marketing is so powerful. It is still to this day, this intimate thing. And that's why some people say they hate it so much because there are companies out there that aren't treating it as such. They're doing it wrong. And so, like I said, at the beginning, you don't hate email, you hate bad email, you hate people spamming right. you. Of course right. you do. That's, but that's what makes it, if you, you know, look at your phone right now, how many unreads do you have? But look at the, I want you to focus on the ones you have opened. Those right. are the ones that are getting your attention. They're gaining your trust and you're buying from, and that's the yep. goal with email marketing. That's what makes it so freaking powerful. So I, I love this. I have a great example of a story, a cool. recent story that um, where someone drove me nuts by being on their email list. And it was simply this. The uh, So I sit in Atlanta. The Atlanta Braves won the World Series. Right after they won the World Series, I went onto the website. Right. Woo! I went on the website and wanted to order a shirt. 
and for my son and I, and I, I went on and it's, and I forget, I'm not, I don't remember who the service was with, but it was whoever's the approved vendor. And I, I ordered the shirt. I want you to know that I ended up getting an email from these people from then on every single day, twice a day about all the great things that they were selling. Well, listen, I didn't want it. And it was, it really ticked me off and I couldn't get over how many times that they were sending me stuff. Now, if they had sent me an email once a week, I would not have unsubscribed. I'm just going to tell you, I'd be like, oh yeah, I'd like to see the stuff that's there. They went hard and fast and it was way too much. I was like, you know what? This is, this is more than I wanted. Plus they subscribe me to whatever the, the MLB's, information about the Braves updates. I ended up, I think I ended up with somewhere like four different email lists. I have shut them all down. I think that they need to figure out their audience a little better. And if they had said to me, Hey, you know, would you like future emails on our products after I bought the shirt? I'd probably say, yeah, send me something once a week. I've now opted in. I would think that would be better from my perspective. But no, now I'm not getting into those emails because they pissed me off. They made me so angry. Here's the flip side. We order. Oh, let's see. Come this way. So we get these beautiful Yeti mugs with our logo on it, right? Yeti sends me an email once a week. I always open them. I'm interested in seeing what they're doing. I think their product is so awesome. I, I I don't mind the once a week email. So that kind of speaks to that. Yeah, there are some emails that I'm going to open, even though it is an email blast, right? Uh, a marketing email. All right, I'm going to shift gears here. I should give you a chance to respond to that. Maybe you, and, and when we get into this, this is um, actually it kind of goes with what we were just talking about. There are different audiences. You used to have an RV audience that you wanted to speak to through whatever means it was, be the blog or so on and the email marketing. But you've got, there are different audiences at the same time that you want to communicate with. How do you communicate? <clears throat> and I've got a frog this morning. Um, how do you communicate differently to different audiences? How do you keep that straight in your head? And is there some methodology that you like to apply? So for example, you probably have clients that have different audiences. How do you best do that? Sure. So at just having multiple businesses, um, I tend to, you know, on Mondays, we're doing X. On Tuesdays, we're doing Y, right? And that, you know, that's just a simple solution. But as far as, you know, making sure you know who you're talking to, right? Like Mark said, all of a sudden, he subscribed to all sorts of MLB stuff. What the heck is going on? Um you know, that, that's not cool. And I always tell people when people ask me, well, how often should I email and what should I do? I always say, well, it depends on your audience. You have to get to know your audience. Um, right now, I do a lot of B2B, right? So people are really excited. They're motivated. They're kind of in that hustle stage where they're working on their business, you know, all the time. I can email them all the time because it's always right here. Whereas it, with the RV blog, you know, these are people that are traveling. They only have internet every once in a while. You know, Sunday nights is the downtime where they're, you know, planning next week or they just got to their site, whatever. That's something I learned that I was like, oh, I'm going to email them on Sunday nights. And I experimented, you know, sometimes I'd email two times a week, sometimes twice a month. And, you know, I got to know like, okay, these people are opening here. Oh, I talked about, you know, I talked about in sync. Nobody mentioned it, right? You know, the way I talk about in sync <laughs> right now, the way we open right. the show, if I was on an RV podcast, it would be a different background. I'd be in my rig. Uh, Mark would have, you know, said, Hey, what kind of fridge is that? Do you have a dinette? You know, we would have talked That's about exactly what things. I would have said. Exactly. Yep. I, yeah. He, you know, he's a pro. He's a pro. <laughs> and so it's just different, different things. Um, and you just have to put your, you know, put your head into like, okay, what does this person care about? What's important to them? What are they doing? What does a typical day or week look like for them? Um, I'm, I wrote it down. I was thinking, you know, I've got NSYNC and Fresh Prince. 
Whereas when I was talking to the majority of my audience, honestly, it was almost 70% men in their 60s with my RV site. And oh. I'm not, yeah, I'm, I'm, I guess they just, they like, uh, you know, a woman who speaks her mind, I guess. I don't know. But I, I would tell a lot of crass jokes. I would point them to, you know, uh, more very informative articles, but mine would be like very, very funny and, you know, cracking jokes about the campground and things like that. And I just really leaned into that crass personality because uh, yeah. th they loved it. And with this, my people, they love that I, you know, I'm still obsessed with, uh, you know, five man boy band and wear colorful <laughs> headbands. Right. So um, even even the headband um, in my old business, I would wear headbands, but they would never be this colorful. They would be, you know, like red or green or just a solid color because um, right. I found that was enough for people. Right. And so you just have to think about who exactly you're talking to. And honestly, the more you email people, the more you get to know them. You might be thinking, well, what the heck, Liz? I, I don't know what they're doing. Ask them. Get them to reply. I think um, that's brilliant. You know, Email, like I said, with the mailbox, it's a more intimate exchange. Of course, it's one to many, right? I'm sending it out to 100, 2,000 people at a time, whatever your number is. But if you can, if you play your cards right, people will start emailing you back. You can open up that one to one conversation. And people, instead of sending out a survey, what's your pain points? Everybody tells me to tell, ask you this. You know, you can have that one to one conversation where they actually start to open up to you, right? Because they know yep, yep. you, they like you, they trust you. So do you think emails <clears throat> that are text only are better than emails that look absolutely beautiful or does it really make a difference? I personally use text only. Sometimes I'll put a GIF in there or GIF depending on how you pronounce it. Um, so wait, 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 wait. what there. is the answer? Is it GIF? <laughs> Or is it GIF? The the guy who invented it says GIF. I used oh, to say GIF. It. I used yeah. to say GIF, and about a year ago, I just switched, and now I can't. I can't go back. It sounds too much so, like gift. <laughs> my mother named my little sister Laura, L A U R A, and mm -hmm. but her Laura, Laura, Laura. Oh shoot! Now I can't remember the other people way people say it. Laura. Lara? Lara. Yeah. Anyway, I can't remember. So it's the way my mom, see, my mom's done a very good job of brainwashing me to make sure I only said the name correctly. Um, but yeah, it's, um, it's like uh, Ariana, Ariana or Ariana or Ariana, right? Right. Like that. I, yeah. yeah. That name is, is difficult. If the inventor calls it a GIF, it's a GIF, right? All right. So, so we settled it today, right we here. Settled it right here. On how's your but e presence? The, so you're finding that a text that your text emails are more effective, or do you think it makes a difference if it's a beautiful email with lots of you know well put together or text? Do you think that would you encourage yeah. a company to use one over the other? Is really the question. I think um, it does affect your deliverability if you have a lot of images, a big banner, things like that. Um, I don't, I don't know all the technical words, but I just call them the internet gods. You know, there's spiders crawling, Google watching, right. Zuckerberg right. is in there with his metaverse now, <laughs> something, there's right. something right. going on back there that I don't understand, but I just call it the internet gods. So the internet gods, you know, it's like a credit score, right? And so as you're building deliverability, if you're new to email marketing or you're, you know, you look at your open rates, your click rates, and you know, people just aren't opening it is better to have um, just a text uh, only email because that helps with your deliverability, right? It looks like it's huh. coming from a person instead of this giant company. Of course, Mark, you know, he just subscribed to the MLB unknowingly and they probably have a ton of images, a ton of stuff, but they've been building their reputation, their credit score, appeasing the internet gods for many years, right? Ooh, and so the little guys, we've got to, you know, we've got to, you know, we've got to pick or build up that credit score one by one, right? So I will caveat that to say, if it is in your brand, like if you're a web designer or, you know, something yeah. where 
you know, the aesthetic is very important to your brand, then of right. course use images, have a banner, whatever. If that is Got important it. to you, then, you know, you'll, you know, you'll still build that deliverability. You'll still build that credit score and you'll still have credibility, um, you know, as you go, if it's important to your brand, it's not very important to me and my brand, my brand. One of my pillars is like keeping things simple and not doing anything that's more than two steps. So of course, putting a banner on that would be very anti that, right? Yeah. Um, and I will make one more argument for some kind of banner. I've seen a lot of people, especially if you're in a saturated market or if you have a name like Liz or Mark, where there's a billion of us, um, sometimes people like to put banners at the top of their emails with their face or their name like or okay. their logo so that you, you know, you associate, oh, yeah, that's Liz Wilcox. Oh, how's your, e that's that e-presence guy, right? It's that woman that because likes NSYNC. Yeah, it's, it's that crazy headband lady that's still obsessed with a band that hasn't made music in two decades. Oh, what does she have to say? Right. Um, yeah, I but it's that. just, it can be, it can be that recognition. So if you find that, you know, you're getting a lot of unsubscribes or even if you get emails every once in a while from people like, I don't remember who you are, or you just have that feeling, you might try a banner with your logo on it or something like that. So you start to uh, get that brand recognition. Oh, I love that. I think that that's brilliant. I, I think those are great tips. Liz, I'm not surprised this. We're out of time. Uh, ah! I had a really good question to ask you next, but uh, well, I guess we're going to have to have you back. Awesome. Thanks, Mark. You guys heard All it right. here first. Email him. <laughs> tell him. <laughs> that's right. Wilcox. Email me. <laughs> that's right. I love that. Please send me an email. All right, Liz, where do you want people to find you? Where's the best place for them to go? Yeah, of course, I'm an email marketer. I'd love for you to join my email list. You can go directly to lizwilcox.com. And in the top right-hand corner, there's a hot pink button. It says free swipes. Earlier, I mentioned about building that foundation so you can have crazy conversion rates. Uh, no more like 1% to 3%. Like that's a crazy average. Like let's, yeah. let's aspire for better, right? So yeah. I've built an entire welcome sequence that you know, helps you build that foundation. I've already written it. You can take it and make it your own. Just go to lizwilcox.com, that top right-hand corner. It's a hot pink button. It says, get your free swipes. You can get it completely for free. I also give you 52 subject lines and three newsletter examples. So you can see how, e how that email marketing, like, I don't know, universe ecosystem all starts to work together. And that's all for free right at lizwilcox.com. Oh, sweet. Awesome. All right, folks. Well, there you have it. Make sure you go to her website. Um, easy enough. It's just LizWilcox.com. That's how did you get that URL? LizWilcox.com. L-I-Z-W-I-L-C-O-X.com. Well, Liz, thanks for being with us today. I so appreciate your time and your feedback. <clears throat> this is something that people need to know. And if you are a leader of an organization, you need to make sure you're building your email list because you own that list. You don't own your contacts. And we say that all the time on social media. You don't own your contacts on social. If Mark Zuckerberg and the meta decided they're out, all your contacts go with it. So make sure you're building your email list using in you social to help build your email list. Liz, thanks for being here. I appreciate you. Um, we're going to have to get you back on the show sometime, but hang out. Don't go anywhere. I want to chat with you after the show's over. Thanks, Thanks so again, much. folks. I tell you what, I'm so glad that Liz was with us today. I always love talking to people about email marketing. The reason is, is that we all, assume, well, I, should, I say we all, too many of us dislike email because it's a pain. I really find email is maddening. So it's always great to reinforce that building your email list and making it robust and speaking to your audience in the way your audience wants to be talked to is a very important thing. What do we do here at ePresence? So ePresence is a full service social media agency. So we help people and companies get online and stay online. So if you're an organization, you're the leader of an organization, you need your personal social media activated, we can help you with that. But you also need to make sure that your company channels are activated. We help with that. What about consulting? What if it, what if you need somebody to come in and just tell you, okay, these are the places that we need to spend our time and our money on social? We help with that. The last is 
maybe you just need your sales team to get on LinkedIn and get active and have a good presence. We also do that training. So those are lots of options that we offer by being a viewer of our show here. How's your represence? You get a discount. We offer all of our viewers a 5% discount. Morgan's going to slap a, a URL there on the screen. Thank you, Morgan. E-PR.me slash listener. If you go to that URL, you will find the access portal to get that 5% discount. We'd love to talk to you and we'd love to help you. How's your e-presence is everywhere. We are now on YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. We're so glad we're on all those spots. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you've landed on the show for the first time. That way you get notified when we go live. Also, if you are a podcast listener, we love you as well. You can go to our website to learn more about our podcast. It's epresence.me slash podcast. So epresence.me slash podcast. It's there on the screen. That's the place to go to learn everything about all of our shows, not just the podcast, but particularly for the podcast. And we are everywhere. Recently, we added, uh, we added somebody. Let me think about this. Audible. Audible is a new location for us. So you can find us almost on every single service provider for podcasts. We're adding content every single week. Every Friday, we drop, we drop a new podcast. So you want to subscribe so you can see what great content we're sharing. If you want more information about ePresence, our website by now, you probably know it is ePresence.me. That's ePresence.me because it's all about you. This show is produced by ePresence. Our producer, writer, and overall extraordinaire is Morgan Wood. We love the work that Morgan does for us. For my guests, Liz Wilcox and me, Mark Galvin, thank you for watching. How's your ePresence?